running a regression or performing regression analysis in Excel is actually pretty easy once you do it a couple times and know where to look for everything. So suppose you're given data on 50 different cities. So due to space limitations here, I can't show all on the same screen. But I've got 50 different cities, and i got the same company charging different prices in different cities that have different levels of income. And what you're observing in quantity is how much they actually sold. And they're trying to compare across all these cities and figure out what the relationship is between the price they charge, the income in the area, and how much they sell. So how do we run a regression? The first thing you have to do is go to the data tab. What you should see in the data tab to the right of this is something called data analysis. Now if you're using a computer that has never actually done this before, you're going to have to add it in on your own. This is something you only have to do once per computer. So if it's your home computer, once you do it, once you're done. If you're using like a lab computer in the computer lab or in the library, uh, if it hasn't been done on that computer, you might have to do it every time you start up. But it's not that bad. Here's what you do. You go to the office button here in the top left. You click on Excel options. Go to add-ins. Manage these add-ins. And then you want the analysis tool pack. It's just something that most people don't use, so they leave it out, but it's easy to add in. And once you hit that, a second later, boom, data analysis is right there. So this is what we want to do. Now, before you get into the data analysis, you have to make sure that you have the data in the form you need. What we are trying to do is estimate quantity is a function of price and income. So we need quantity on the left, that's our dependent variable, and we need price and income on the right. Those are our independent variables. If your professor tells you to run a regression of quantity on income and price, he wants one regression. He's not asking you to perform one regression with price and one regression with income. You want both of them together. The way Excel works, you actually have to have both price and income in adjacent columns. So you could just copy or cut and paste and move these guys together. So they just have to be together. The next thing you need to check for is to make sure that every cell you're looking at is actually a number. This one I have and it's fine. I'll go back later and show you what happens if, for example, I delete a number. And if you leave a number out and there's no data, you're going to get problems in Excel. So I want quantity as a function of price and income. So here's what I do. I click on the data analysis tab. I go down here and I find regression. And now this is my setup. My y range, the y variable, is the variable on the left-hand side. That's the dependent variable. That's our quantity. You can't just click this whole row. I'm sorry, this whole column. If you click the whole column, it includes all the blank spaces in rows 52 and 53 and 54 and everything below it, and then Excel freaks out. So what you have to do is just click the stuff that actually has data in it. So you can start at the top with the header and scroll all the way down here, and we're done. You don't have to include the header, but if you include the header, if you choose to include the header, you need to be sure to click the Labels button. I like to include the header because in the output that you get, you will see that it's actually easier to see what's going on. If you don't click the Labels button and you don't include the header, you just get some numbers, and it's harder to see what's going on. So include the header, click Labels, and you're fine. Our X range is going to be, we want price and income, so then we go and scroll all the way down, hold the button down, and then let go. You should know how to do that. Um, we don't want to click this constant as zero. We want to estimate what the constant actually is. There's some types of analysis where you'll want a zero constant, but you probably won't end up needing that. 95% confidence level is standard in economics, so we're not going to worry about that. The new worksheet means it's just going to open up in a new thing. I've already been playing around with this before, so I already have a worksheet called results. This is going to create a new one right next to it. And we click OK, and we go. So this is sheet two. I could actually delete my results tab and then rename this one results. So here's what I get. I get all of this stuff. Now, your textbook or your professor in an economics or statistics course is going to tell you how to interpret all these things. That's not my job today. My job today is just to show you how to do this in Excel. One thing I do want to point out is at least the basics on how you interpret this. We wanted quantity as a function of price and income. This is linear regression. So the way you interpret this, it's these three guys right here. These are the most important ones you're looking at. You're looking at quantity is equal to 81.69 minus 0.21 times the price. Oh, my minus sign didn't get in there. Minus 0.12 times the price plus 3.41 times income. That is how you interpret what we've just done. 
So this is the coefficient on income, 3.41. That's the coefficient on price, negative 0.12. If you hadn't clicked that labels button, you wouldn't see these names here. It wouldn't call it intercept price and income. It would call it coefficient 1 and coefficient 2 and coefficient 3. Or I forget what it does because I don't even do that anymore. But it doesn't tell you exactly what you're looking at. Now let me go back and show you what happens when you screw up. So suppose I try this again and I do data analysis. Anytime you click on data analysis, it's going to remember what you did last time. So suppose I click on this and I don't check the labels button. It's not going to work. It's, it tells me that the range contains non-numeric data. It's looking at B1, C1, and D1 and thinking they're numbers. And when it sees something that's not a number, it freezes up. So you got to make sure that you got the labels button clicked. The other thing I want to do is show you what happens when you have missing data. If you don't have income for this one observation, and you try to do your data analysis the same way you did it before, you get that. You've got non-numeric data. It's expecting a number here. So in this case, if I had this data, what I would have to do is basically delete this observation, get rid of it. Now, you'll hear in your statistics and economics classes when you can and can't just get rid of data. It's usually not a good idea. Sometimes you're left with no option. But what I want to show you is that when you have missing variables in Excel, it won't work. Other programs will just drop those out of the equation and run it without it, but Excel's a little bit more strict about that kind of thing.